Hi, welcome to the December uh, December Auto Task webinar from top left. That is our new brand. We uh, welcome everybody who's here. Thanks for joining. This probably won't take too long. Uh, we have, you know, it's not intended to be a big long thing. 10, 15 minutes, I would expect. And uh, yeah, let's let's go on. We are recording this too, so uh, for anybody who, if you need to send it on to some colleagues, then you're you're welcome to do that. Uh, when we're done. <clears throat> All right. So what do we have? Um, I want to jump right in. I'm talking about what is available today in the Autotask, uh, Kanban for Autotask. Um, and I'm trying to think where we left off in the last update in October. Yeah, it's been a little while. I think when we did that update, we didn't actually have any boards ready. We were just about to launch the boards, but uh, and we were like syncing all the data. So you know, like we had a copy of the data that we needed, but we didn't actually have the boards ready to go. So we've come a long way since then. There are Kanban boards available for both service tickets and project tasks. So whether you're working on service tickets or projects, you can make use of Kanban. You can drag and drop, meaning you pick up a card, you drag it across to another column, drop it there uh, to set this new status of the card. And that's kind of the main thing that happens. So that's available. Uh, you can also drag the cards up and down in the lists and they stay there wherever you put them. And that is a method for ranking tickets, kind of an important part of Kanban processes. So you can do that. There's two-way sync. So when you know when you update a ticket or a task in Autotask, we find out about that change, change how the card is displayed in Kanban, and when you drag a ticket or task across a different column, we go and change the status in the in Autotask. So wherever you look at the data, it's always up to date. We have uh, really flexible filters so that you can define the boards exactly how you need. You know, you might have a couple of different cases for your service tickets made you maybe want to have a, a view for uh, just for dedicated to triage, for example. So you can set up filters that just show the tickets that need to be triaged. You might have a view you want to have just for your engineers, for example. So it's very flexible. Uh, there's also filters that the, the individual members who view the boards, they can uh, apply these filters, for example, to only show tickets for themselves is a common use for that. So that's available now. The swim lanes, uh, those are the horizontal lanes that are an option and they group the tickets by certain properties. The main ones are grouping the tickets by uh, the project that they're part of or by who they're assigned to. And I have screenshots of both those things. I'll show you in just a moment. We are able to highlight neglected work. So that means identifying work based on, uh, right now it's based on uh, how long a ticket has been in a certain status. Because that's a very good indicator of <clears throat> how long uh, how long a ticket has uh, kind of sat somewhere. And so we can use that, uh, you know, if it's been in progress for three or four days, we can use that as an indicator to say, this ticket isn't moving through our pipeline as fast as we'd expect. So it needs some extra attention, either from the engineer or from the project manager, service manager, or you know, whoever might be able to help get that ticket back on track. So we highlight the work that's not moving forward based on how long it's been in the status. And we also have cards that show uh, a bunch of useful information on the ticket, in particular, the due date, the uh, age of the ticket, if you want that, uh, category, or the project phase for, uh, if it's a project task, we can show that. So those are all useful things. Let me give you a couple of examples here. So this is, uh, this is just a pretty plain ticket board. So you could use this as part of your triage process, for example. Um, <clears throat> Uh, to have you know tickets show up here on the left column, things that need to be triaged. So uh, you'd see those there. You know your dispatcher or whoever has a role would see those tickets there. They could uh, move them across to the ready column and prioritize them in this list so that your engineers can come to this column when they're looking for new work and take whatever is at the top. So that'd be a pretty efficient triage process. And uh, then we'll also have columns for other key states such as uh, waiting. Uh, things that would those are things that are blocked on somebody outside your team you know, frequently your customer needs to get you some more information so they would wait there until that happens and then a uh, column for in progress showing you what's actually going on right now so pretty simple and uh, yeah so you can do all those things right now here's an example of a swim lane board it's a little small um, normally you wouldn't have it zoomed out so far i just wanted to show the uh, a number of different swim lanes here so this is a uh, a board that is grouping tickets by who they're assigned to so we call this the you know the resource swim lane or technician swim lane 
In fact, the first swim lane here is grouping the tickets. Uh, it's showing tickets that don't have anybody assigned. So those are, um, that's good for uh, identifying issues. For example, you know, if you have a certain number of tickets that are uh, not assigned to anybody, but they say they're in progress, that you would find those here. And so you, know, you probably are gonna have a rule that says this column should be empty. We don't wanna see anything there if it's in progress, but nobody's assigned. Uh, then after that, we see columns, or pardon me, swim lanes for each of the members who have tickets on this board, you know, Michael, Gary, Allison, and so on. So this makes it very easy to see how your work is assigned, how it's distributed to see if anybody has too much work assigned to them. Maybe they have not enough. And also the engineers can work from their own, they can have, for example, their own column of ready tickets here, their own uh, lane of tickets that are queued up. They could also be pro prioritized. You can drag and drop to set the rank right within here, within the swim lane. And, uh, and so that's a pretty good way to organize the work and make sure that, that uh, each engineer knows what is queued up for them. And also to communicate between the engineers and the, like the service managers to, you know, so they can all see exactly what's going on, they all have the exact same view of the data, see what's in progress, what's waiting, what's ready, and so on. We also have, uh, here I have an example of a <clears throat> project swim lane board. So these ones are showing project tasks, and um, you can see how they're grouped, just to show, you know, these are, it's pretty clear here, all of these tickets correspond to this project and so it's a great way to uh, be able to plan out your projects and see uh, get a really good at a glance view of what's going on with each, each project you know same with the service same as the service tickets and so on we can see them by the status here and uh, and this is actually the only well I should say in Autotask there's no way to plan out multiple projects at once so um, this is actually a really powerful view that you can't effectively do in Autotask at all uh, being able to see multiple projects at once uh, and having a way to plan them out you know because you always have more than one everybody has more than one project that they're planning at a time so it's powerful to see uh, <clears throat> powerful to see more than one at a time here so I wanted to talk about what is coming up a little bit. So these are things that we're still working on and uh, we'd expect to see them in the next, um, well, the, the top ones we'd expect to see in the next month. And uh, I would hope that we can get through all of the rest of them in about the next two months or so. Um, we consider them, you know, the, the stuff at the top is the most important. This is how we do lean. If they're more important than they're at the top and things that are less important or are more effort than they go at the bottom. So, um, yeah, but we'd hope to get through all of this within the next two months or so. So one thing is adding new ways to identify neglected work. So we'd like to show when was the last time entry on a ticket and when was the last note, because those are good ways to identify work that's been neglected. We want to be able to let you do more out of Kanban. So in particular, we want to be able to assign technicians to tickets in uh, writing Kanban, to be able to schedule service calls in Kanban, uh, enter time, for your engineers. So that's a really good way for your engineers to be able to do more and more just out of Kanban. So we'll be adding that <clears throat> and changing the ticket priority uh, as an example. So that's a, sometimes an important part of a triage process. We also want to add views of the ticket SLAs so that if, you know, if you're making effective use of SLAs, you can also use that in Kanban to make sure you're priority, prioritizing those tickets based on, um, <clears throat> based on the SLA and when the next SLA stage starts. Uh, we want to show the sales opportunities so that your sales teams can take advantage of Kanban too <clears throat> and be able to customize the card styling <clears throat> because that is, uh, that is something we do on the ConnectWise side of the integration and uh, it's very effective to be able to say uh, change the card background color if there you know, certain condition is true on the card, such as you know, if it's in a, in a certain status, maybe you have two statuses that are mapped to one column, but you want to highlight one of those statuses, so you can match on the status and change that to a uh, <clears throat> change it to a different background color or give the card an outline or something like that. So that's effective ways to set up things like um, um, escalation so that you can highlight certain tickets that have kind of been escalated within your team, you can use that. Or to identify problems on the ticket, such as if it has, um, uh, if it has no budget set, you have a requirement that it needs to have a, um, like an estimated time required for it. Um, if it's in a certain status, you want to maybe highlight that ticket somehow if it doesn't have that, and you have a business rule that says, you know, once it 
gets past this stage, we need to have a budget. So <clears throat> you can help to identify things like that. So uh, now I would like to invite on um, Jennifer from a company called BSTG. Jennifer, thanks for joining. <clears throat> I uh, She has been um, using Kanban quite a bit at BSTG. And uh, yeah, so I just had a few um, questions for you, Jennifer. Um, are you online? I mean, I see you're online here, Jennifer. Can I hear you? Right, I am. Right, thanks Hi. for, for uh, inviting me in. Yeah, I appreciate your time. So um, Jennifer, maybe you could tell me what were some, well, first tell me like two sentences about BSTG so we get an idea um, of where you're coming from. And then uh, tell me what were the, the problems that you were facing that made you come and kind of look for new tools to integrate with your auto task? Okay, so um, we're actually, we're B Structure Technology Group and we are uh, an MSP and a managed services provider in the Los Angeles area. And so we have a lot of tickets from a lot of different clients that are coming in and we're pretty good about starting work when we're looking in the incoming queue and we're seeing the, the tickets as they're dropping in and starting to address them. But oftentimes somewhere in the process work gets lost and we have uh, a bunch of different queues in which and statuses in which work can end up and we wanted a better way to track and to have better visibility into what was going on. So that was the main issue that we were trying to solve. And our constraints were, you know, for better or for worse, we have Autotask, it's, it's what we're using and we didn't want to look outside at yet another tool. It's yet another system to have to integrate in and, and figure out how to use and another thing for uh, our uh, text to open and all of that. So how can we make the best use of what it is that we have? And this came along and it seemed exactly like the thing that we needed. Mm -hmm. Great. And so you've been using it a fair bit. Um, what's one or two ways, kind of the main benefits you've seen and, and how has Kanban helped so far? It's incredibly easy to set up the boards. That's the one thing that I really love. Once you figure out how to do it, it's easy. And I, on the first day that I got in with you and we set it up, I set up like eight or nine of them. And um, one of the first things I discovered was I had a ticket assigned to me that I was unaware of. <laughs> so it it did it jo its job immediately. Uh, it's also great to be able to go in and say, show me something when it's new, it's come into our inbox, and it, the due date is coming up. I like the, the uh, visuals that it gives me right on the card. And I love that it gives me very easy ways to s slice and dice the data. I can go into the filters and look at just mine. I can go in and look at just our service desk as opposed to our project engineers, um, look at it by client, look at it by status. There, there's a lot of different ways to set up it's really great. I was showing it to one of my engineers the other day, and he was like, this is great. Send me the link to get into this. <laughs> so he was really excited, and um, it made it really easy for me. I had to write a report the other day, a, a summary of outstanding issues after a, a big migration project, and it was so much easier for me to just look at the cards visually open them up, assess, and then write my report, then having to go through the grid and auto task, which doesn't provide as much information just looking at the grid as I, as I can get visually out of, out of the Kanban cards. Mm -hmm. Great, well, thanks for sharing all that. And those mm -hmm. are all things, I mean, a lot of those things are, uh, those problems that you described are certainly things that are shared by a lot of MSPs. I didn't hear anything there that, that seemed particularly unique. So you know, a lot of MSPs are going to be having those same sorts of issues, and, and we hope that Kanban can be part of the solution for a lot of other MSPs. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Jennifer, for your time. Appreciate that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> okay, so next thing, um, we have uh, 
just talk about our rebranding just a little bit. So as you've seen, we are top left now from, uh, we used to be known as CW Kanban. In fact, if uh, that's still in progress, you can still look through some sites and I'm sure you'll find CW Kanban in a few places, but we're removing those. And uh, so where did the name come from? It comes from just kind of some of the ideas around Kanban. So if you've set up your Kanban board where you have work moving from the left to the right, then when you're an engineer, you're looking for new work, you're gonna to go to the top left to, of the board, and that's where you're gonna find new work. The, uh, the red part of the logo there, the arrow is pointing towards the right, and that re represents that we like to see work moving through the pipeline from left to right. <clears throat> and now I just wanna talk a little bit about the, the early bird promo for Autotask. So that is available until the end of the month. And uh, you know, if you're interested at all in looking at that, because this can be a pretty significant discount, uh, you know, if you want to get started with with Autotask even before we kind of declare that it's it's complete, um, you know, you've seen how much functionality there is already, so you can certainly get benefit out of it already, even though we are, we still have some work to do, um, but. If you're willing to do that, then we'd like to say thank you by offering these special prices. So uh, for a one-year term, uh, we'll give you 10% off the regular one-year price, which is 20, you know, effectively $21 a month, but we'll get 10% off. So it's only about $18.90 per license. For two years, 20% off for um, the price of $16.80. And then three years, you, um, if you want a three-year term, you can get 30% off. So that is um, almost half the, a little bit, it's approaching half the price of our regular monthly price of $27 for a license if you just pay monthly. Um, also, if you choose to do that, we will send you your choice of either the Phoenix Project book or Making Work Visible. Those are pretty well-known books that talk about uh, various topics on visualizing work and just good practices in, um, in running uh, agile IT environments. <clears throat> and uh, if you want to sign up for that, your link is topleft.team slash autotask, and there's a button there that uh, will lead you to the sign up page. And that's where, uh, if you want to take part of the those early bird promos, and those are the promo codes there that you put in the shopping cart to get, uh, yeah, to be part of the early bird program. And that's it. For anybody who has questions, you can use the, uh, the question or the, uh, yeah, there is a Q&A part of the Zoom webinar. So feel, I'll stick around for a couple of minutes in case anybody has any questions. If not, Merry Christmas. And we hope you have a good holiday season. And we hope to see you soon in, uh, in Kanban.